some might find this a little strange, but even more than Jimi Hendrix, Eric Johnson is the largest single-handed, most influential guitar player in my life, period, ever, ever. Now, it all depends on what particular mode I'm in. I feel that exact same way about Stevie Ray, too. I feel the exact same way about Robin Trower. I feel that exact same way about Frank Marino. I mean, and then you have to add Wes Montgomery and Chet Atkins and Albert Lee and Jerry Reed and Herb Ellis and, you know, Tuck Andres. You have to, yeah. Segovia and Joe Pass and, you know, Derek Trucks. Uh, of course, I mean, I think the most famously known left-handed player is Jimi Hendrix. And, uh, you know, that just goes without saying that the guy is very influential on anybody, no matter what the style is that they do. You know, the certain songs, I mean, I remember being seven, eight years old and hearing Made This Be Love, and uh, I just started crying. You know, it was just so beautiful. And the tones that were, that, that, that were coming from that song was amazing. So it's like a pot of gumbo that includes them, you know, and it's at any given moment what direction I may go in, and then you take them all and mix them up together. <laughs> playing predominantly the question is about my involvement with the the uh, Grammy and Oscar winning group Triple Six Mafia that's also from Memphis Tennessee uh, we have had uh, several uh, things that we've done together uh, and a lot of the work that I'd done with them wasn't under my name it was under uh, Raw Dog or it was under Little E or you know, because I was signed to a, a record label f under the likeness of the Eric Gale's name. So, you know, I didn't want to get in trouble. It's quite a few members that has uh, passed away in that group. And uh, I thought I might have been one of them, but for some reason I'm still here. And, uh, you know, got a really good relationship with DJ Paul and Juicy J, me and Juicy J. I mean, me and DJ Paul talk quite often. and. Uh, it's a lot of, uh, when I'm not playing guitar or on stage, I'm predominantly listening to like hard trap rap, just, just beating. I mean, in my vehicle, I got two 12s in my Mercedes Benz Sprinter truck. I got two 12s with two amps and, you know, I gotta hear the, I gotta hear that. <laughs> question was asked, uh, you know, what is some of the things that I can, you know, maybe relate to, you know, the younger generation about uh, my story for, you know, what would I tell someone that has no idea who I am or what I've been through? Uh, and this is for you. My name is Eric Gales. I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm the youngest of five boys, all in the music industry, uncles, aunties, cousins, everything. I gained my first record deal at 15 years old a quarter of a million dollar record deal. Uh, I graduated high school. I did want to do that. I was also uh, so blessed to grace the stage. I was asked by Carlos Santana, could he be my godfather? And I said, yes. Uh, I also was asked to play Woodstock 94 with Carlos Santana. It was the highlight of my life at 17 years old. It was a million people out there. Never saw that in my life. So I give you that part first. <clears throat> But at the same time, I, was, I began to get very intrigued with the street life. And shortly after, you know, I didn't grow up that way. I didn't grow up in a broken home. My parents were there. I didn't grow up where drugs and alcohol was prevalent. You know, I tried cocaine on a dare. And uh, it was the worst decision I ever made in my life. 
and uh, that went on to a 30 year run. Prison, friends dying in my arms, uh, guns arrested several times. I lost my license for almost 20 years. And uh, I say that to say that you're only a half a step away from following down that same path. But what I don't think is going to happen for this generation, I don't think you'll survive. I'm just being very serious with you. I don't think you'll survive. With the stuff that they have out there nowadays, it'll kill you flat. It'll, it'll take you out. I don't knock anybody for having a good time, but addiction is no joke. It's no joke. Stay focused. I don't mind. I, I'm not going to tell you not to have fun because I didn't let nobody tell me not to have fun. But man, only you know if you got a problem. And hopefully you can catch it before it gets down the road. There's a point in overturn. And uh, there is a, there's a substance that you can hold to. For me, the one thing that never left me was the music. It never left. It never got away. I strayed away, but the music never left me. So that's the one thing that I'm glad that I have as something I can hold on to. There are many young people out there that have nothing to hold on to. So if you have a gift, a talent, an interest in something, stay with it. Stay with it. Peer pressure is going to come. That don't mean you have to answer the door when it knocks. And I implore you, hang in there, man. Being different is very, very cool. Very cool. So that's my piece. <laughs>